Hey, and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna carry on looking at the new SwiftUI 3.0, you know, features. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can actually add swipe actions to our views in our lists and how we can actually control actions depending on which buttons someone taps on. We'll also look at how we can actually style these actions as well with some new modifiers provided to us. So if you want to follow on with this tutorial, I've actually uploaded the starter project for this into my um, GitHub and also as well, I'll leave the link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get started and look at how we can use this in SwiftUI 3.0. So as you can see here, we have basically got a inbox. So this looks like the Apple, you know, mail app that you have on your phone. And what we're going to do is add some swipe actions to the left and right of each email inbox item. So it's worth noting that before we um, start, I just got a view model, um, which is a state object. And this is where we store all the messages that you're seeing on the screen here, as you can see. And another thing to note as well is in order to get this working with swipe actions, you actually need to make sure that you're using a list with a for each within it if you don't do this then it isn't going to work so what we're going to do is we're going to add a swipe action onto our inbox item view and it's actually fairly simple to do so what we're going to do is go on here and just type this out so when looking at the um, swipe actions modifier you can see here that you actually have two so we're going to focus on the first one for now, which allows us to just define the content that we want to show in our view. So let's enter and just have it like so. And then now what we need to do is actually add in a button so you can actually see this on the screen when you swipe. So let's do that. Okay, cool. So now what we're going to do is just run this in our preview. And if I actually swipe from the right hand side, you'll see that we now have our swipe action here flag. So you can see here the text flag. Also, notice as well how the color is gray. So by default, all swipe actions actually have this color. And also as well, they don't actually come with an image automatically. This is something that you need to handle yourself and it's something we'll do in a second. You'll also notice as well that you can actually swipe all the way and it'll actually perform an action. So by swiping all the way, this would actually execute our print statement. And just to see this in action, I'm actually going to run this on a real life, um, real life. I'm actually going to run this on the simulator so you can actually see this printed into the console. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So as you can see on our simulator, if I actually swipe to the right hand side, and if I actually tap this button, you'll notice that in our console, it actually prints the message, plug item. And also as well, if I just swipe across all the way with a full action swipe, you can see it executes and triggers our action to print the plug item. So it's worth noting as well that the first um, item or the first view within your swipe actions is actually the one that gets triggered whenever you perform a full swipe. So because this button is the first one in our list, this is why this is getting executed. What if we want to have a swipe action with some text and some images? So right now it's just a piece of text that just says flag. Let's actually add an icon above this and it's actually quite simple to do. You just need to make sure that rather than using the text view, you use the label view instead and we'll use an FF symbol as well. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So now what we wanna do is we've only got one here. So what I actually wanna do is I actually wanna add two more actions. So I want to add a delete action and a more action as well. So within our swipe actions, let's just add this in now. All right, cool. So let's just break this down. So now if I actually open this up again, you'll see that we actually have uh, three swipe actions now. So like I said before, because this button here is the first one in our list of buttons, whenever we perform a full swipe, this is what's going to get executed. So our delete button. And if you notice with our button here, we've actually specified the role destructive. So because we specified a role of destructive for our button, this means that we get the styles of a system delete button. So we don't need to like apply any kind of colors onto it. It just comes with these styles for us, which is pretty nice. 
So what we've also done here is we've used a label with uh, it says the text delete and obviously we're using this SF symbol trash symbol to show that we want to delete something. Now, if we go to the next one, we've still got our flag image, which we had before, which is our middle one. And finally, our new last one at the bottom here is more. So if you look at more, it's the exact same as flag, except this time on our label, we're doing something a tiny bit different. So we're actually using this new modifier that's available since iOS um, 15, um, and it allows you to change the symbol variant. So what do I mean by symbol variant? So let's say if you have a ellipses like this, if I actually take off this modifier and we just run the preview again, you'll notice that our ellipses doesn't actually have a circle around it anymore. So what we can actually do is we can actually specify what styles we actually want our SF symbol to have on it. And we can actually combine them using the dot noten notation syntax. So just to show you that, if I had a ellipses with a circle and I just take off the fill, you'll see now that Oh, well, I don't even need the fill. So you'll see now that we actually have the ellipses with the circle. So we actually don't need the fill um, property on top of it. We can just use dot circle and we'll get a circle applied onto our ellipses. All right, cool. So one thing you probably realize now is that our more and our flag actually look the exact same. So we don't actually have anything to like distinguish between these two so it might be confusion for a user looking at this at a glance so to get around this what we're going to do is actually see how we can apply some colors onto our swipe actions so let's do that now if you actually go into the assets folder or assets um, library you'll actually see there's a color that I created called dark red so what I want to do is I actually want to use this dark red color for our flag so in order to do that, Swift UI 3.0, there's actually a new modifier called tint that allows us to apply a tint onto a view. And in this case, we're going to apply a tint onto our button within our swipe action. So on our flag button, let's just say this. So what we're saying here is we want to apply a tint onto our button with the color dark red from our assets um, library. So now if we just expand this, you'll see now that our flag actually has a red, um, dark red tint on it. So we can now easily distinguish and see visually like the differences between all of these um, different swipe actions. So the next thing I want to look at is how we can actually control the position of where these swipe actions are actually placed on the screen. So by default with swipe actions, they're automatically added to the trailing edge. So if you don't know what a trailing edge is, that just basically means the right hand side. So what about if I actually want to have some swipe actions alternatively on the left hand side? So you can see I'm trying to swipe to the left and I'm not actually seeing anything appear here. Well, it's actually quite simple to do. So you can actually apply multiple swipe actions onto the same view. So underneath our first swipe actions here, what we're going to do now is add another one, but this time we're going to specify that we want the edge to be leading, which means from the left hand side. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So now let's just break this down. So if we actually look at this now, so we've got our leading um, swipe action. And as you can see, because this item is on red, we now, depending on the state, we're going to change the SS symbol and the text that you see on the screen. So this is a unread item. So if we want to mark this as red, then we can tap that. And this is a red item. And as you can see, it's got the SS symbol for unread. And also as well, if you notice, we've actually got a tint. So we've actually used the system's accent color to apply a tint onto our swipe action. So we get that blue color by default. It's actually quite easy to add um, swipe actions depending on uh, which edge you want them to. So as you can see here, like I said, that we specified that we want the edge to be um, leading. And here we've not actually specified that we wanted it to be anything, but by default it will be trailing. So if you want it to be trailing, I don't really see the need of having to type out trailing because it will do that by default. I just feel like you need to specify as leading if you want it to specifically be on the left hand side. That's the way I approach it. So what we want to do now is depending on the action that you tap, we want to actually manipulate and change our view. 
So what we're gonna do for the first one is actually change the red status for our inbox item. So within our view model, let's just go inside of here and we're going to create a new function called toggle red. So all the way at the bottom here, let's create a new function. So what we're going to say here is depending on the item that it finds, we're going to toggle whether the item is red or not. So I'm just going to write out some um, high order function to basically just do this. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So if we actually break this down. What we're saying here is we want to get the first index where the ID in the array matches the item ID that we passed in. And then based on that index, we're going to access it using subscripting to change the status and toggle whether it's either red or unread. So the reason why we're using first index and not something like for each is because we don't want to loop through every single item in the collection. We just want to filter out and find the first one. So if we actually use this function within our content view, so let's scroll down to our leading egg action. And then rather than printing this out, we're going to use our view model to toggle red for item. And then we're going to test this out and see what happens. Let's do that now. So now if we swipe across on here, and we tap red because we've read this, then you can see now that the view disappears and we get a new you know, view. And if we actually go to the second one and choose unread, you can see that we get our unread icon here. And if we do the same here, we get it here as well. But if you realize then when you're looking at it, the animation is a bit janky. So what about if we want to make this look a lot smoother when we want to toggle the red and unread states? Well, let's go into our view model. And at the very top, we're going to import SwiftUI. And then within our optional chaining to get our index, we're going to use the with animation block to animate the toggle status. Like so. And it's important to note that I'm not using this outside of this optional chaining is because I don't want to just perform this animation every single time. I only want to do this when it successfully finds the first index. So now let's resume this. And then on the red, you can see now that we get a nice animation between the red and unread status. So it's quite smooth and it's less janky compared to before. So that's nicer in my opinion. So what I wanna do is I just wanna show you how you can control the full swipe action. So as you can see here, we can just full swipe here and it'll just perform an action, which is what we um, want. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can actually disable this full swipe action if you want to. So what we're gonna do is if the item has been flagged, then we're going to actually um, disable the ability for you to delete and also to perform a full swipe action. So let's look into how we can do this now. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually write out a function to actually toggle the flag um, state. Okay, cool. And as you can see, it's very similar to our toggle red, except this time we're just saying that, hey, we wanna just toggle the flag is flag property. So now what we're going to do is in our content view, we're going to call this um, function. So let's go into our print flag item. And as you can see within our view model, we're just going to call toggle flag for item. So let's just test this out. So if I swipe across on here and I tap the flag, you can see now that we actually get a flagged item and that appears. And if we actually unflag this, so we tap it again, it will remove the flag. But right now we don't really have a view to indicate that we want to unflag this item. So what we wanna do is depending on the flagged state of our item, we want to actually show two different sets of swipe actions. So let's do that now. So within our first swipe actions, we're going to actually use a if statement where if the item is flagged, we want to show some views. And if it is a flag, we want to show a different set of views as well. So let's do that now. So as you can see, depending on the if statement here, we're just going to be displaying two different sets of swipe actions. 
So we're saying here that if the item is flagged, then we want to show the flag with a slash through it and we'll show unflag and more. And also as well, uh, what we're saying here is if the um, item is not flagged, then we wanna show the default actions that we have before, which is the delete action, the um, flag action, and also the button for present more. So let's actually just look at this. So if an item has been flagged, we said before that we want to disable the full swipe action like this. So how can we actually disable this full swipe action? Well, it's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is use the property on our modifier called allows full edge swipe. So what we're gonna do is use that now. So on here, we're going to say allow full swipe and we're only going to allow a full swipe if the item is flagged. And we're only going to allow a full swipe if the item is unplugged. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So let's choose a row where it's on, it's not been flagged yet. So let's do this. And as you can see, on the delete action, we can actually fully swipe that and perform a full swipe action. And as you can see on this row here where it has been flagged and we want to unflag it, we can't actually perform a full swipe on it. So in order to actually um, unflag it, we actually have to tap this icon here. And then now you can see that we can actually perform a full edge swipe if we wanted to. So how can we actually perform a action whenever we want to do a full edge swipe. Well, if you remember the start before, I said that the full edge swipe is performed on the first button within your list of views. So in our case, because we're only allowing a full edge swipe when the item is not flagged, that's within our else statement here. So when this here triggers, this is what will trigger when and we perform a full edge swipe. So all we wanna do now is we actually want to delete the item based on a full swipe. So let's go into our view model and we're gonna create a new function called remove and it will actually delete the um, item from the array. So let's do that now. All right, cool. So what we're saying here is we want to delete the item. So this will remove all items where the IDs match and we're going to wrap this in a with animation. So let's use this function on our destructive action. So here we're just going to say uh, view model dot delete item like so, and I'm going to resume this. So now let's actually test out and see what happens. So on this item here, because this is not a flag inbox item, we're going to just tap it first to see what happens. And as you can see, it deletes the item from our list with a nice animation. And on our third email item here, if I was to just swipe across like so and do a full swipe, you can see it also deletes it and does it with the animation. So as you can see, these swipe actions are really, um, they're really powerful and they're really nice to use as well and really easy to set up within your Swift UI app. So that's everything from me today. Um, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comment sections below because um, I always want to know what you want me to work on or show off or what you're interested in. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.